Great. All right, I want to say happy Sabbath to you, brothers and sisters. It's a blessing to stand before you here this morning mm -hmm. to teach the Word of God. Read it for me, is my esteemed colleague, Brother Rashad. And my name is Brother Andre, as some of you know me already. Mm -hmm. If we have any new visitors, I want to say welcome to the Israel of God Bible Study Class. Amen. We teach Jesus because he is the rock of our salvation. Yep. And he's the way and he's the truth. There is no other way we can enter into his kingdom without first going through him. Alright, so today's lesson is called Return to the Lord with a whole heart and he will establish you. Return to the Lord with a whole heart and he will establish you. Now, what does that mean? Return to the Lord with a whole heart and he will establish you. Well, we're going to go through the scriptures and it's going to show us plainly how is it that we can return to the Lord out of the Lord will answer our prayer. Because if we ask to miss the Lord, the Lord will not answer our prayer. And we are in the season. In a few days, they'll be celebrating the unconquered son, the birth wow. of their so-called Jesus. And I know this time of the year, it's very challenging because you can't turn on the radio without hearing the jingle bells. Right, right. And the peace and the goodwill to all men. What about the rest of the year? There is no peace and goodwill to all men. What about all this <laughs> shooting that's taking place in Baltimore City? The crime is so high that they're scratching their heads. They don't know which way to go as far as solving the murdering. It is so, so discouraging to know that you know you can't live into a neighborhood and not worry about breaking it. But if these preachers teach the people the truth and teach them what does say the Lord, maybe we won't have so much killing and so much crime because then they'll be they'll know that they have to keep the law. And we gotta look at the scriptures and a lot of people probably overlook this. They're so caught up in the tradition of man. And we're going to start out with Luke 16. Because the Lord says something here that a lot of people overlook. We're going to pick up this at Luke 16 and verse 15. Luke 16, verse 16. Because, you know, these people are so caught up in the traditions of men that they completely forget what the Lord said. Not to remember him in his birth, right. but in his death right. and resurrection. See. His birth can't do you no good regardless of how much you keep the so called. Roman Christian day holy. So we're gonna look pick up this at verse 15. And we're gonna examine this a little bit. Go ahead and read. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Mm -hmm. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. That's right. That which men esteem. That which highly esteem among men is an abomination to the Lord. So these pagan holidays that we esteem so high is an abomination to the Lord. For the Lord gave us his holy days in Leviticus 23. Right. For us to follow those days that is a plan of salvation. Not let alone the Lord, some people talk about, you know, Purim. There was nowhere I can see in the scripture where, where Jesus even celebrated Purim. Right. So, we right now 
supposed to be focus and try to make this and keep staying on track so we can be glorified at the time appointed. So the Lord told us in Jeremiah 10 that the custom of the people are vain. Yes. For the days which they claim is the birth of Christ is abomination to him, he clearly tell us to remember his death and resurrection. If ever I couldn't figure it out, how can we know today can figure out when Jesus was born? Right. Right. And they're claiming that he was born on the 25th day of December. But we're going to look at some trials that, and some tools that Jesus used. What did he do? All the prophets, he dictate this word to all his prophets. And he's going to use some of these tools to completely disarm Satan. These are the tools that we must keep in mind that we're going to use. Because Jesus is the captain of our salvation. Right. And he's actually showed us the roadmap. So we're going to pick up this in Luke. Go back to Luke 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Luke 4, verse 8. Yes, sorry. Luke 4, I'm going to pick up at verse 1. Luke 4, I'm going to pick up at verse 1. Alright, let's do it. Alright, go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. That's right. So, this felt like there was a Spirit actually holding Jesus and leading him into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But if we read Isaiah 50, it will tell you that that Holy Ghost is nothing other than the Word of God. For the book, the book told us that Jesus, the Lord, gave, gave him the tongue of the learned, that he should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary, and he that awaketh in the morning. So it's no. No other than the word of God that Jesus is full of. The same word that the Father gave him, he, he gave us. Go ahead. Right. Being 40 days tempted mm -hmm. of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. Mm -hmm. and, when it, and when they were ended, he afterward hungry. Right. Satan's going to test him at his most vulnerable time when he's really, really hungry. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, mm -hmm. If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And so, right, and Jesus answered him, saying, go ahead. And Jesus answered him, saying, it, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Right, every word of God. They completely miss overlook that. That's some word, but every word of God. So if we got to operate by every word of God, then why is it that we're saying that it is a thought that comes? When we turn down that Christmas gift, or that gift that they, you know, put at, in the envelope and tell you that, hey, this is your, uh, this is your Christmas gift for doing such a good job. Why do you think just tell you, okay, this is, you know, at the end of your bonus, so it can be more acceptable to you? Are they trying to get you caught up with this pagan mentality? So Jesus spoke this word. These words were taken from Deuteronomy 8 and verse 3. These are the same words that Jesus used that he dictated to Moses. So Jesus is not saying nothing new. All he's doing is showing us the tools that he's using against the fire darts of the devil. And these are the same tools we can use when we're dealing with you know, obstacles, dealing with the fiery darts of the devil. So he's not using nothing different. Go ahead. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed mm -hmm. unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Mm -hmm. And the devil said unto him, 
All this power will I give thee. All this power he will give to Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that gave it. All this power. So now you're going to see that he is the God of this world. Go ahead. And the glory, and the glory of them. That's right. All the glory, all the bling bling. <laughs> all the Mercedes Benz and all the pleasures that you can imagine, he can give that to you. Go ahead. For that is delivered unto me. And right. to whomever, and to whomever, and to whomever so, I will give it. Right. Whosoever bow down and worship him, whosoever deem that they want to be a part of his minion, he will make you rich. Because God is not the only one who can bless you with riches. The devil can do that too. Mm -hmm. And the book tells you, a righteous man will fall six times, and after the seventh time he'll rise. While the wicked man, he fall once, and that's it, he's done. <laughs> Go ahead, my brother. If thou therefore will worship me, mm -hmm. all shall be thine. All that should be his. So he's given Jesus the riches of the world that Jesus already created. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Okay, so where did the Lord get those words from? Those words came from Exodus 34. Verse 14, the same tools that the Lord gave Moses to use and to teach the children of Israel is the same thing, the same tools Jesus came back and used to fulfill the testimony. So, we're the first Adam fall, the second Adam must stand in the gap to recover the creation. Since Jesus is the captain of our salvation, then we must follow his example. Let's go to James 1 and pick this up at verse 13. So Jesus pretty much set in the example that we must follow and using the same tools that he gave the prophet. Because what Jesus is doing is showing us that, hey, these tools do work. So James 1, and we're going to pick this up at verse 13. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. That's right, because God don't tempt no man. The only one God tempted it was, was Abraham. And what he was doing was basically trying Abraham because he's a part... He's a father faithful. And he can't just earn the name of the father faithful without going some, through some trials and tribulation. Because everyone's got to be tried. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. That's right. He cannot be tempted. No man with evil. Go ahead. Neither tempted than he any man. That's right. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And enticed. That's right. So when is he tempted? When he's drawn away by his own lust and he's enticed. So if you ain't lusting for something, they can't tempt you with it. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're lusting for something, that means there is a weakness and you can be tempted at any point in time. Your fit foot can slip. So we're going to even have to look at even some prophets who... Oh, they saw the progress of the wicked, and they, their feet almost slipped. Go ahead. Then when lust hath conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin, mm -hmm. and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Exactly. So sin bringeth forth death, because sin is the transgression of the Lord. Law. So Satan can't make you do anything, brothers and sisters. Satan only can persuade you. He got the power of persuasion. So even though your challenges may seem greater than everyone else, it doesn't mean it is exclusive only to you. So we're going to look at 
1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. We're going to be one. <coughs> because we're going to examine if the trials and tribulation that you're going through, is it one that the Lord personally uh, constructed just for you? Or is it something that common to man? And common to even the prophets that wrote this book? So, these are the challenges that we are facing now. But all the tools of the trade is in this book that we can use to overcome these obstacles. Right. You see, we don't get caught up in teaching you how to hate. Right. Because we know the Lord created every man and woman on this planet. And if the Lord is sending you to recover these people, then why is it that you're throwing them away? Right. Why is it that you going to turn around and try to shoot these people because you hate them? That is wrong. That is not what the Lord is about. So let's go ahead and pick up this uh, verse 13. Go ahead. They have no temptation taken you, but as such is common to man. Common to man. Go ahead. But God is faithful. Mm -hmm. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. That's right. So he ain't going to give you more than you can bear. Go ahead. But will with temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That's right. Because the, the Lord said that he will not forsake you. He will, he will always leave you a way out. And he will not give you more than you can bear. So Jeremiah saw everyone around him that was doing well, except for him. He's facing all these challenges that he thought he was the only one facing it. It's not a challenges that was common to man. So he had to question the Lord and ask the Lord this. Let's go to Jeremiah 12. I picked up at verse 1. He had to ask the Lord this question. Because the, the, he's being enticed by the prosperity of the wicked. And he wants to know, Lord, why is it that these wicked are prospering? I mean, they ain't born for nothing. Look around, now they got all that money that they're spending. But come at the end of the year, they'll be broke. Some of them can't even, won't be able to even pay their light bills. So we're going to pick this up on Jeremiah 12 and verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 1. All right, go ahead. This is a question that Jeremiah asked in the Lord. Go ahead. Righteous art thou, Lord. Righteous I, art thou, O Lord. Go ahead. When I plead with thee, mm -hmm. then let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Let me holler at thee about your judgment, O Lord. <laughs> Go ahead. Wherefore did the way of the wicked prosper? Why does the way of the wicked prosper? And the righteous is going through all these fiery furnace, mm -hmm. and nothing seems to be working for it right. or for her. Go ahead. Wherefore are they happy that deal very treacherous? <laughs> right. Why well, are they so happy? Right now they are so happy. <laughs> they are jingle belling you to death. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, every time you turn on the radio or the TV station, man, woo, good will to all, and you can't get away from that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how Satan can bless you too with great wealth. Because he's a god of the world. Go ahead and pick up in verse 2. Thou hast planted them, mm -hmm. yeah. They have taken root. They grow, yeah. They bring forth fruit. That's right. They, they, they take root and they grow like a big, big tree. They, big, big, big tree. They just spread out, looking all green and beautiful. Life is good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reign. That's right. You are just they talk about Jesus all day, but he's not under your mind. He's far from their mind. Go ahead. But thou, Lord, knowest me. Mm -hmm. Thou hast seen me mm -hmm. and tried mine heart toward thee. That's right. Pull thee out like sheep for the slaughter mm -hmm. and prepare them for the day of slaughter. That's right. So they are getting their rewards now. But they don't know that they are being set up for the day of slaughter. Because once they fall, that's it. So Jeremiah said, I know, Lord, you are not with these people. We have to do a self-check sometimes when we see the prosperity of the wicked and kind of look into the mirror. Even David himself fall is in this kind of dilemma. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go look at David who faced the same challenges that Jeremiah faced and his foot almost slipped because he saw the prosperity of the wicked boy and he was just about ready to jump the fence, man. Because boy, this life is tough. <laughs> you find out since you come into the Word of God, your pocket might be a little lighter. Because you have to pay tithes and you can't work on the Sabbath day and you can't work Friday night sometimes. Do volunteer overtime. Because that's where they, they pay you all that overtime money mm -hmm. on the weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because many times, I mean, they offer me overtime like crazy. I have to be turning down all this money. <laughs> all this trip to Alaska and stuff like that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I have mean, a few of those trips, man, that I can like pay off my car notes. Like, uh. So it is tempting. So we gonna pick up. Psalm 73, and we will pick this up at verse 1. Go ahead. Truly God is good to Israel. That's right. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Mm -hmm. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Right, his feet was almost gone. Go ahead. My steps have well nigh slipped. Uh -huh. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. That's right. He had to do a self-check. Because he saw the prosperity of the wicked and God. You see all the nice cars, the nice house. And it's like their prosperity, they're prospering so much, it's like there is no break. They ain't broke. They feel in the pinch like other people. Go ahead. For there are no bands in their debt. No bands. But their strength is firm. They're always making that good old moolah. Uh huh. Verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. No, they are not in trouble as other men because they sell their soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Neither are they plagued like other men. No, they are not plagued like us. They broke, they came, they can pay their rent, they can find their way out. So. Some of these people call themselves agnostic and this is what they are saying to the Lord. They have some, you know, audacity to say this to the Lord because they are doing so well. They have their guns, their money, their car, and all the technology there is. We're going to drop down to verse 11 and see what they are saying to the Lord. Go ahead. And they say, mm -hmm. how do God know? Oh, no, it's God. What do God know? Go ahead. And is there knowledge in the most high? No, they are pressing this knowledge. They forgot that the knowledge that they, they gained to invent these, these technology is the Lord that gave them it. Because everything comes from above. Ain't nothing come from below. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there, no question, is there knowledge in the most high? Go ahead. Behold, these are the ungodly uh -huh. who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. They increase in riches. So don't envy them. Go ahead. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain mm -hmm. and washed my hands in, innocent, 
Innocence. Innocency. For all the day of the lo- for all the day long have I been plagued. That's right. And chasing. Go ahead. And, and chasing every morning. Mm-hmm. That's right. So you going through all these challenges and all these trials, but these wicked people ain't going through nothing. Right. Go ahead. If I say, mm-hmm. I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Okay, sorry, skip down to verse 16. When I thought to know this, mm-hmm. it was too painful for me. It was too painful for him. <coughs> because he's watching these wicked people prosper. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, sometimes you live from paycheck to paycheck. And sometimes, man, you don't know where the, the other dollar is going to come from to help you to pay that rent. So it was too painful for him. Go ahead. So he's got to go into the Lord's sanctuary and the Lord's going to give him an answer. Because the Lord always take care of his servant. Go ahead. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, mm-hmm. then understood I their end. That's right. Then he understood their end. So what will be their end? Verse 18. What sure. will their end be? Go ahead. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou cast them, cast it them down yeah. in destruction. That's right. So they are prospering now, but their foot is on a slippery surface. So when they fall, that's it. So we got to stay true to the Lord. So the Lord put this in here to edify us that when our faith start getting weak we can read this stuff and it strengthen us because we know joy comes in the morning it might be hell in the night but joy comes in the morning the Lord letting them get their reward now because their end going to be worse than their beginning so Let's look back with this. Let's go to Psalms 92. Psalms 92, I'm going to pick it up at verse 5. Let's back this up with Psalms 92. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. All right, go ahead. O Lord, how great are thy works, Mm -hmm. and thy thoughts are very deep. Mm -hmm. A prudish man knoweth not, neither do a fool understand this. That's right. So, the Lord said in Isaiah 55, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways like your ways my ways is high as the heaven is from the earth so are my ways so go ahead and verse 6 oh you read verse 6 already verse 7 Seven. yes when the wicked spring as as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish mm-hmm. it is that they shall be destroyed forever that's right so they shall be destroyed forever. So don't end with the prosperity of the wicked brothers and sisters, for when they fall, there is no getting up. But the righteous will fall six times, and the seventh time he will raise up. Let's go to Psalm 37. Now pick this up at verse 35. So this is some encouragement to strengthen your faith to give you that extra energy to make it through this week with all the distraction and the temptation. It is more prevalent now than any time else, any time in the in the year. They're gonna jingle bell you to death. <laughs> So we're going to pick it to verse 35. Go ahead. 
I have seen the wicked in great power mm -hmm. and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Mm -hmm. Yet he passed away, mm -hmm. and lo, he was not. Yet I saw him, but he could not be found. Right, he cannot be found. That's right. Mark the perfect man. Go ahead. Mark the perfect man, mm -hmm. and behold the upright. Mm -hmm. For the end of that man is peace. That's right. So regardless what you're going through, your end will be peace. It is written. Can't be changed. As long as you follow the road map to salvation, you guarantee to get this reward. Go ahead. But the transgressors shall be cut, shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. That's right. But the salvation of, of the righteous mm -hmm. is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. That's right. In the time of trouble, turn to the Lord with a whole heart, mm -hmm. and he will establish you. And don't let Satan put the, those evil thoughts in your mind. Let's, verse 40, go ahead. And the Lord shall help them mm -hmm. and deliver them. Mm -hmm. He shall deliver them from the wicked and That's save right. them because they trust in him. That because they trust in him. You've got to trust in the Lord for him to guide your footsteps. Give you that, mom that momentum to go on. You know, like when we baptize you, mm -hmm. one thing we do is pray that Pray to the Lord that if, if you fall, it's not the fall that's going to hurt you, it's in not getting up. So that's why we always pray for the Lord to strengthen you, that in the event that you fall, He encourages you to get back up. Because if you stay down, that's where the danger comes in, and that's where you can run the chance of, you know, getting into the lake of fire. And, you know, that's not our goal to see anyone miss, miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, go ahead, verse 40. Oh, you read that already? Yeah. Okay. So, let's go to uh, Psalms 107. 107. So, so the question is going to answer, why is it that some people suffer more affliction than, than others? So that question needs to be answered. So we're going to go to Psalm 107 and let the book tell us why. Because you see some people and they are afflicted. So we're going to pick this up at verse 17. Psalm 107 and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. <coughs> Go ahead. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Fools, because of their transgression, and their iniquity, they are afflicted. So we see why they are afflicted and afflicted without mercy from the Lord. Go ahead. Their soul abhorred mm -hmm. all manner of meat, and they draw near to the gates of death. So even though they are aff they are afflicted, they will not allow well. The I'm word that look, they would not the listen to the word of the Lord, and regardless how much you bring them this word, they would not listen to you until they are afflicted. So the Lord said they even refuse any kind of meat, meaning man of meat, meaning the word of God. Right. They refuse to hear that. Mm -hmm. So now, in their affliction, they gotta follow upon the Lord. Go ahead. Then they cry unto the Lord mm -hmm. in their trouble. And what he's going to do? And he saved them out of the distresses. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Mm -hmm. That's right. He sent his word, his word healed them, and his word delivered them from their destruction. 
Because the Lord said, it is not his will that anyone should perish, but all should come to repentance. So we can tap into some of that power from the Lord if we are willing to be obedient. So we're going to go look at good old Job and look at some of the challenges that he faces. So let's go to Job 33. Job 33. Job 33. Brothers and sisters, you're going to have challenges when you're serving the Lord. Because your reward is to, He's going to make you become God. And He can't have no God that's going to rebel against Him. You see what happened to Satan and his minion? They rebelled against Him. And they were made perfect. So, the the trials that we are going through, this is called training day for us. Because once we make that mark, that's it. All right, go ahead and pick it up at verse 14. For God speaketh once, mm -hmm. yet yeah, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Right, he didn't. It fall on deaf ears. But once he's Immobile, look what the Lord is going to do to it. Go ahead. In a dream, mm -hmm. in a when vision of the night. It. Yep. When, when deep sleep falls upon men. That's right, no distraction. Go ahead. In slumberings upon the bed. Mm -hmm. Then he openeth up the ears of men mm -hmm. and sealeth their instruction, that they may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from men. That's right. So you might have a purpose in life to do one thing. But that may, might not be the same purpose that the Lord has for you. See, I've never thought one day in my lifetime that I was going to be able to become a no preacher. Mm -hmm. Versus more being a head of a no cat. Mm -hmm. That was not even one of those weird dreams. <laughs> this is the last place I was trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to Vegas and live it up. <laughs> but that's not what the Lord had planned for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean if anyone ever tell me that I was going to become a preacher a teacher uh, that is so far fetched but who knows go ahead he keepeth, he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. That's right. He does this by his word. Go ahead, verse 19. He is chastened also with the pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. Sometimes, sometimes you must be, sometimes you gotta be the back, you gotta be a man and take a look at yourself, you know, take a look, do a self check. Let's jump to verse 27. And we're going to read about that self-check that, you know, Joe back to do. Go ahead. He looketh upon men, mm -hmm. and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profit me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall be, shall be the light. That's right. So if, if a man can admit his wrong, he can be saved. But if a man can't admit his wrong, that means he's got a whole lot of pride. Right. And that brother needs to take some humble pill mm -hmm. so the Lord can recover it. And he has to bring fruits of repentance to show the Lord that he is sorry for the things that he has done in order for the Lord to deliver him.
Verse 29. Okay. Lo, all these things work with God oftentimes with man. Mm -hmm. To bring man his soul from the pit. To be enlightened with the light of the living. That's right. We've got to return to the Lord with a full heart. And he will establish you. The Lord, it is not his wish that he should destroy anyone. And the Lord don't want you to lean upon your own understanding because that's what ca caused the fall of the, the fall of mankind. We lean upon our own understanding. So let's go look at this in Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. And one Lord has, has Solomon to write. Let us not lean upon our own understanding because that is what caused the creation to fall. Because we lean upon our own understanding and not the Lord's understanding. Go ahead. Uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 3, or we'll appeal by verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him. That's right. In all your ways you got to acknowledge who giving you all this power and this strength. And some people refuse to call upon Jesus. They have an issue with his name. Even though he said, From the rising of the sun to the going down, going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles and revered by the heathen. So, why is it that they have a problem with calling upon his name? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he shall direct thy paths. Mm -hmm. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Mm -hmm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. It shall be health to thy name mm -hmm. and marrow to thy bones. Mm -hmm. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. That's right. So you honor the Lord with the first fruit of your increase, which is you get your net pay. That's 10% for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You file your taxes, that's another 10% for the Lord. Right. So you always take your Lord first. Mm -hmm. And He will increase you so much. You will have more than what you need. Go ahead. Verse so two. shall thy barns be filled mm -hmm. with plenty, mm -hmm. and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's right. You'll have so much, it will overflow. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. My son, despise mm -hmm. not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. That's right. Don't rebel because the Lord is chasing you and you're going through some challenges. Don't be weary of his correction. Be corrected, and he will establish you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he correct you. That's right. And if he don't love you, then he call you a master. Go ahead. Even as the father of the son, mm -hmm. in whom he delight. All right. So let's go to uh, Hebrews 12. Into the new book. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. You get something out of this? Yeah. I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> okay. Hebrews 12, and we'll pick up at verse 1. Looking at Christ's own examples. Go ahead. Wherefore, see, we also are compassed about. Mm -hmm. With so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight mm -hmm. and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. That's right. Go ahead. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's right. So we've got to have some patience so that we can finish this race. This is not a sprint race. This is a meticulous race that we've got to use some strategy and run. Because if we don't finish this race, the one who doesn't finish it 
end up in the lake of fire. Go ahead at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's right. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Go ahead. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's right. He went through some shame. He went through some embarrassment. But he bear it because he knew what he was trying to accomplish. He, Jesus had enough power at that point to, to say, hey, skip it. I don't need all of this. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. It is for our example so that we should follow. Go ahead. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners mm -hmm. against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Go ahead. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. That's right. Ain't none of us have resisted unto blood yet. None of us. Ain't none of us that someone going to put a gun to your head and tell you, hey, if you believe in Jesus, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to cut you your head off. That is coming up soon, though. They call it our temptation. Call I'm again. Go ahead. Five. Mm -hmm. And he has forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Mm -hmm. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. That's right. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourge it every son whom he received. That's right. If you belong to him, he's going to scourge you. Every son and daughter. Go ahead. If ye endure chastening, mm -hmm. God dealeth with you as a son. For what son is, is whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. That's right. So. If you are not being chastised, hey, then you don't belong to him. You're a bastard. Go ahead. Furthermore, we have, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us, and we have given them, and we have gave them reverence. Yeah. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? That's right, because He is the Father of all spirit beings. He set the protocol in Genesis, every seed after its own kind. So if we want to be like him, then we are subject to his rules and his regulation. Just like how we're subjected to man's rules and regulation. And don't we follow it? Because if we don't go to work every week, we don't get a paycheck, right? Then we can't pay our rent, we can't pay our car note, then before you know it, you're outside. You're homeless. So the same faith that you put in that you're going to get a paycheck every Friday is the same faith you need to put in to come into the Lord Sabbath every Saturday. Show up and keep an holy convocation. So that's the duty of man. Go ahead. For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Mm -hmm. But he for our but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's right. So that's the only way we're gonna be partakers of his holiness. Because God is holy. Go ahead. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, afterwards it yielded the peaceful, the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. That's right. So that's what we are working for, that peaceable fruit of righteousness, that fruits of the Spirit to exercise so it can manifest among our brothers and sisters and they can see that we truly believe in what we are doing and we believe 100% in this God that we serve. This is not a cult. It is a way of life. So let's go to uh, Job 5. Job 5.
Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That's right. Happy is the man that the Lord corrects. So he's not walking out around with a frown on his face. He's not looking mad like a mad bulldog, pissed off and mad at everybody. Go ahead. For he make it sore and bind it up. Mm -hmm. He he wounded, and his hands make whole. That's right. Didn't the Lord said his word heal? Go ahead. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall be, there shall no evil touch thee. That's right. So he, he will deliver you. A righteous man falls six times, and seven times he rises back. So the Lord will recover you if you stay in for the long haul. So let's go to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. And we're going to pick this up at verse 23. Psalms 37, and we're going to pick it up at verse. 23. The step of a good man or a good sister. Go ahead. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Read the step of a good sister to his ordered by the Lord. Go ahead. And he delighteth in his way. Mm -hmm. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. That's right, that the Lord delighted. When the Lord delighted in your ways, even your enemy is at peace with you. Go ahead, verse 25. I have been young, mm -hmm. and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's right. David said that. He's been a young man, and now he's been old. And he's, he has never seen the righteous man beg bread. He, he's not even homeless. So sometimes you see people going through some changes in their life, and you you know you have to question yourself and ask, man, why is that they're going through what they're going through? Sometimes maybe they're not a true servant of the Lord, and He's putting them through that changes. So he can recover that. But once you are a true servant of the Lord, he tell you, he will not forsake you. And you will not be out there being homeless or begging bread. Let's go to Proverbs uh, 24. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead. For a just man falleth seven times. All right, a just man fall seven times. Remember we read earlier that he falls six times and rise, now he falls seven times. Go ahead. And rises up. Stay down. And rises up again. And he rises up again. Even the seventh time. But the, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Mm -hmm. Rejoice not when thy enemy fall. That's right. Don't cheer when your enemy fall because the Lord going to look back and say, well, you become just like your enemy. Yep. Because now, instead of you 
feel sorry <coughs> for what you see your enemy going through, you are rejoicing. So why should I keep punishing your enemy mm -hmm. when you now become your enemy? Because you is just as evil as that person that he's punishing. So he's going to turn around mm -hmm. and do the same thing to you. Right. Go ahead. And let not thy heart be glad when he mm -hmm. stumbles. Lest the Lord see it and it mm -hmm. displease him. That's right. And it turns away his wrath from him. That's right. So don't celebrate over your enemy's calamity. Verse 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Mm -hmm. Neither be thou envious at the wicked. That's right. Because remember, David and Jeremiah, they envy the wicked prosperity. For, for they didn't like what they were going through. But when they went to the house of the Lord, they learned that they are only going to prosper for right now. But later on they're going to pay for it. So don't envy the wicked. Go ahead. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. Mm -hmm. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. That's right. My son, mm -hmm. fear, thou the Lord, fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them both. That's right. So the Lord only hear the prayer of the righteous. For the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to him. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Psalms 34 and pick up at verse 17. Mm -hmm. Psalm 34 and pick up at verse 17. The righteous cry, mm -hmm. and the Lord hear it, and, right. and delivered them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save of such as be of a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Right, delivered them out of some. Mm -hmm. Out of them all. So, that means the Lord's do what he says he's going to do. Mm -hmm. He deliver you out of all your affliction. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He keepeth all his bones. Mm -hmm. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay, with the, with, evil shall slay the wicked. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. That's right. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. That's right. So none of them. None of you who believe in the Lord shall be desolate. This is what the Lord is saying. And these are the tools that he put out here for us to use. That's why he have his servant, the prophet, wrote these books. So let's go to the new book. Uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. We're going to read from verse 1 to 4 and then skip. Go ahead. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, mm -hmm. arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. With the same, don't he say, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ? Right. So you got to have the same mindset, just like all of us in here. Got to be on the same mindset and be on one accord. Because if we are not on one accord, then the enemy can easily come in here and create havoc among us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For he that have suffered in the flesh mm -hmm. have ceased from sin. Because they keep in the law. That's the only way you can cease from sin. Go ahead. 
that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For well, the time past of our life may, su may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lasciviousness, mm -hmm. lust, excess of wine, revelings, vagaries, and abominable idolatries. That's right. So, the book is telling you that wine is a teaser and strong drink is raging and who deceived by it is not wise. So, if you are being deceived by some alcohol, then you are, you can't be a wise man. And the book already tells you not to do no idolatry. It's an abomination to the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 4. Where they think it strange mm -hmm. that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Right, because you don't want to participate in their function that one or another. Because you don't want to participate in their function, they speak evil of you. What's wrong with you? You are a part of this cult because you ain't keeping this Christmas festive season. So 1 Corinthians 13 and 13.10 remind us that there is no temptation that taken you but such is common to man. So let's drop down to verse 12. Pick this up to verse 12. Go ahead. Beloved, mm -hmm. think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which mm -hmm. is the trial, as though some strange things happen unto you. That's right. So don't think because it's happening to you, it is strange. It is mm -hmm. very common. Yep. You can talk to some of these brothers and sisters who've been in the world for a long time, and they can tell you some of the challenges that they face. Even on the job, some of them can't get off to keep the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So that is nothing new when you, you know, you start serving the true and living God. Yes, the tradition of the world now becomes a hindrance to you. Not that they really hate you, but it's no, you're on a different path mm -hmm. from the one that they are traveling on. Right. And now it, it created a conflict mm -hmm. because they're not trying to see that the things that they are doing is not in concert with the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is totally contrary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it creates this challenge and this difficulty in your life. Right. All right, go ahead. But rejoice mm -hmm. in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, mm -hmm. that when his glory shall be revealed, mm -hmm. ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye, re if, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. That's right. Be happy mm -hmm. when you be, be a reproach for the name of Christ. Go ahead. For the spirit of the glory and for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Mm -hmm. And on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. That's right. He's glorified on your part. They can talk all the what they want to talk. They can say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Don't mean a hill of beans. Right. <laughs> but let none of you suffer as a murderer. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, mm -hmm. or, or as a thief, or a busybody, or as an evildoer, mm -hmm. or as a busybody in other men's matters. That's right. There is no glory to that. Right. So, verse 17, go, verse 16, go ahead. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. That's right. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Where it should begin? At the house of God. That's right. So judgment first starts here. Right. If we can't get it right here, do we expect the people outside of the building to get it right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? We already know what's going to happen to them. Go ahead. And, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Right. Read that again. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So this walk is one that is very serious. We can't take it for granted, brothers and sisters. So he, he said, if the righteous is scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The righteous are you and I who are here keeping in the word right. of the Lord. And he said, if we are scarcely saved, that means the Lord had to find something mm -hmm. in our record that prevents us from making it. And if we are scared to say, what about the one who don't know no God? What's going to happen to them? Mm. So that is something that you really want to take serious. Go ahead. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God mm -hmm. commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, okay. as unto the faithful creator. All right. So we must return to the Lord with a whole heart so he can establish us. Let's go to first, let's keep over to first Peter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Yeah, you're right there already. Um, verse 6. First Peter chapter 5. I'll go Peter 5, verse 6. Go ahead. Humble yourselves, though, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he may exalt you in due time. That's right. If you humble yourself, he's going to exalt you in due time. Not in the time that you set forth and think that he should recover you, but in the time that he said you're supposed to be recovered. A lot of times we want to put artificial time on things, but sometimes it really don't work out like that. Go ahead. Casting all your care upon him, mm -hmm. for he careth for you. That's right. Be sober, be vigilant, mm -hmm. because your adversary, the devil, <coughs> as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Right, so if the devil is walking around to see who he may devour, we have some brother talking about that uh, Revelation 12 has not been fulfilled. Satan hasn't come down on earth, so why is man in trouble? If Revelation 12 has not been fulfilled. Why is it Satan is walking around seeking who he may devour if he's still in heaven? <laughs> did the Lord, did, did Satan decide to go back to heaven? <laughs> go ahead. Who, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That's right. The same affliction that is accomplished to in the prophets and the apostles is the same one that is being accomplished in you today. So these are the things that you are going through, they went through it. So it is nothing new. Go ahead. But the God of all grace, mm -hmm. who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while. Make you perfect, established, mm -hmm. strengthened, settled. Settle you, that's right. So let's look at an example of four Hebrew boys who were delivered by the Lord. We're going here to look at these brothers' faith that it, it didn't, their faith didn't waver them, even though they had to resist and to blood, which is something we haven't done yet. And that is really coming to us, which is that power of temptation. So even though this chapter is dealing with uh, 
you just have guidance and we, we're really not dealing with that right now. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to be talking about Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Okay. Daniel 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. I'm going to be skipping. Go ahead. So let's just look at the example of these Hebrew brothers' faith mm -hmm. as a captive. Go ahead. Verse, verse 4. Uh, verse 1, we'll pick up at verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king mm -hmm. Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king mm -hmm. of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in his hand, mm -hmm. with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the hand of Shinar, to the house of his God. Mm -hmm. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Mm -hmm. And the king spake unto Ashkenaz, the master of, the, of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science mm -hmm. and, such, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So these brothers are very skilled and the king is looking to teach them their language and also to learn science from them. We're going to skip to verse 8 and go ahead. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Mm -hmm. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Right, so even as a captive, Daniel still remained faithful to his guidance. And you can tell that the Lord is with him because how is it that a slave going to tell his slave master what he wants to eat? <laughs> So go ahead. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, mm -hmm. I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your soul? Then shall ye make me in danger, my head to the king. Alright, so Hananiah and Meshach and Azariah convinced Melzar to feed them with the with pulse, which is lentils and chickpeas, for ten days, and they will look and fear better than the king's boys that gonna be eaten from the king's table for three years. So this is a challenge that he gave to uh, Melzar, and you know, Melzar pretty much fear that if these boys don't look as good, then his neck is on the chopping block. So he's putting his neck on the line. But the Lord give, give Aniah, Meshach, and Azariah, Daniel, Meshach, and Azariah, favor. Go ahead. Prove thy servants, mm -hmm. I beseech thee, ten days, and let them and let them give us pulse to eat mm -hmm. and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. Mm -hmm. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than, than all the children which did eat portions of the king's meat. So they look better than the children's, the children of the king. Where are we at? Uh, 16. 16? Okay, go ahead. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink mm -hmm. and gave them pulse. Mm -hmm. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king said, had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in to, to Nebuchadnezzar. 
And the king and the king communed with them, and then among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Uh -huh. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were that were in all his realm. Okay, so. Daniel and the Hebrew brothers and all the rest of the Hebrew brothers, you know, they won that bet because they put their trust in the Lord knowing that if they do what he says, stick by the dietary law, that he is going to pull them through. So we're going to look at the challenge and the trials that these brothers are going to face in chapter 2. So, like I said, we are taking, what, we, what we're looking at is their faith. How these, these brothers face. How these brothers resist against uh, resist against the king mm -hmm. and what he wanted them to do in terms of bow down and serving his God. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lesson on the four wings of heaven. There's a book called the four wings of heaven. Mm -hmm. So you know you can read up some more on that. So we're gonna go to Daniel chapter two and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, mm -hmm. wherewith his spirit was troubled, mm -hmm. and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, mm -hmm. and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king, Sariah, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we shall show the interpretation. The king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut into pieces, and your houses shall be made dung here. So now, O oh, king, a person tell you about something that you dream, if you can't remember what is it that you dream? <laughs> so, they are put in a, they're put in a, in a bad position and somehow they're going to try to pull Daniel, Misha, Azaria, and Abednego into that fold so that they would be the first one that the king would have their head cut off. But the Lord, remember, the Lord is going to establish them. He's going to remove them out of this situation. And we're going to see that as we as we read along. Go ahead. But if you show the dream mm -hmm. and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream mm -hmm. and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we, sh and we will show the interp interpretation thereof. The king answered and said, I know, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. It is gone from him. He, he can't remember what dream he had. Go ahead. But if you will not make me known, but if you will not make known unto me the dream, mm -hmm. there uh, there is but one decree for you. <laughs> for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Uh -huh. Till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. So the the, 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 the king is going to prove that. So all this time he's been paying them, and they've been living it up. Mm -hmm. So no hey. It's time for them to, to show what 
they've been getting all this money for. So now they're going to pay the piper. Go ahead. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Ain't got gold. He said, There is not a man. Of course, there's not a man, but there's a God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore, there is no king, mm -hmm. lord, nor ruler that <laughs> asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. So, the king didn't ask Daniel and his fellows, but yes, still the kings, yes, still they sought Daniel <laughs> and his fellow to be slain. So that tells you the things that a captive go through. So now these brothers also going to show you that they had to resist unto blood. And that their faith and their belief in their God is going to take them through. Go ahead. Then Daniel answered with the counsel, mm -hmm. of, the counsel of wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard. Mm -hmm. Which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Right. So he's going to ask the man, why, why is this decree so hasty? Go ahead. He answered and said to Ariok, the mm -hmm. king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Right. I, I mean, I'm just finding that out now. Why is it so hasty? And what he's going to say, go ahead. Then Ariok made the mm -hmm. thing known to Daniel. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him, give him time. And that he would show the king the interpretation. That's right. Give him time so he can go take it to his God. And that's what we got to do sometimes. We got to take, sometimes we got to face a challenge <laughs> that we can't handle, we can't deal with. We got to take it to the Lord. Go ahead. Then Daniel went to his house mm -hmm. and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Mm -hmm. that they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret, mm -hmm. that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Right, the Lord said that he put his information in your mind while you're asleep, mm -hmm. put his instruction Yep. So that's the same thing the Lord is doing right here. Right. He's putting his instruction into Daniel's mind. Right. So the Lord is not doing nothing different. Go ahead. Daniel answered and said, mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of, of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. And knowledge to them that know understanding. Right, so that's why we don't worry about the guy that's in power. Because we know God set him up. And the Lord can take him down. So that's why we don't worry about who is the president. Uh-uh. We just know where we're going and where we're supposed to be. Where are we at? 24. 24, go ahead. Therefore Daniel went unto mm -hmm. went in unto Ariok, mm -hmm. whom the king had ordained to be destroyed, the wise men of Babylon. He went and said unto the, un, he went and said thus unto him, mm -hmm. Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before uh -huh. the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. That's right. Go ahead. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, mm -hmm. and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Which will make known unto the king the interpretation. The captive of Judah. The slave. So they went and get the slave. So then the Lord said, He gave Israel the oracle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what he did. Even though Daniel is a captive, he gave Daniel the answer. Go ahead. The king answered and said to Daniel, mm -hmm. Whose name was Belteshazzar? Art thou able to make known unto the dream? which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? Right. 
Can, can all, of your, all of your boys that you have, can they show you it? They're supposed to be the smart. They're supposed to be the wise man. They ain't going to listen to no Hebrew. <laughs> Just like when we try to teach them the true word of God, ain't nobody listening to us. Ain't nobody paying us any attention. Because right. what do descendants of slaves know? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But there is a God in heaven mm -hmm. that revealed secrets and make it known to the king, of ne the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Mm -hmm. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into my mind upon thy bed. Mm -hmm. What should come to pass thereafter? And he that revealed secrets to make it known to thee what shall come to pass. Right. Like I said, even we're, 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 you know, we're not dealing with the Gentile dynasty and that's what this is about. That you have in the Gentile dynasty, you have the gold, which is the <coughs> Babylon, which is the head. You have the meat of Persian, the shoulders and the body, and the belly area. That is the grease and the foot, mm -hmm. the legs and the foot, mm -hmm. and that's that's the Roman Empire. But you know we are not dealing with that. We're just looking at mm -hmm. the challenges that these brothers have to face mm -hmm. and the challenges that we have to face today. Mm -hmm. It might not be the same, but mm -hmm. these are encouraging words that going to strengthen you to get you over the hump <clears throat> to let you know hey what you face is not uncommon mm -hmm. go ahead okay we're at 31 mm -hmm. go ahead thou O king mm -hmm. songs and behold the great image this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. All right, that's good. So we're going to, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Go to chapter 3. So we're looking at the, the, the challenges that Daniel had to face. And oh, he stood up in righteousness before the king as a captive. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Chapter 3, we're going to pick up at verse 1. Go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, mm -hmm. and the breadth thereof was six cubits. Mm -hmm. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, mm -hmm. the governors, and the captives, and the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to be to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the, sh the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So they. They're here to pay homage to this statue mm -hmm. and to bow down to this statue. So they, we're going to see that they want Daniel to do the same thing too. And we're going to see how Daniel handled this situation. Go ahead at verse 6. six. And, whoso, mm -hmm. and whoso falleth not down in worship mm -hmm. shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So these brothers are facing death if they don't capitulate. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore, at that time, mm -hmm. when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, mm -hmm. flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, mm -hmm. and all kinds of music, all the people, the nation, and the languages fell, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So can you imagine if you had to face this? Mm. <laughs> mm. Can you imagine if you had to do the same, face this trial that these Hebrew brothers has to face? Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so let's you finish up verse seven. Okay, finish up seven. Uh, verse eight. Go ahead. 
Wherefore at, the time, wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Okay, so they tried to set them up. Let's skip to verse 12 and hear the rest of the story. There are certain there are certain Jews whom thou hast sent over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. <laughs> They serve not thy gods, uh -huh. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh -huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the, the golden image which I have set up? Sorry. Go ahead. Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, mm -hmm. flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, mm -hmm. and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is not God, and who is that God that That's shall it. deliver you out of my hands? <laughs> he don't know, does he? So now, for the sake of time, we're going to skip. Let's see. So, now if they don't worship this image, they're going to be thrown in the fire of furnace. So now we're going to see what their re response shall be. Let's jump to uh, verse. Okay, verse 17. Go ahead. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire and furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. That's right. So he will deliver us. Whether he will do or not, we don't know. But one thing we know, we ain't going to bow to your image. Just like when they're bowing to these images, now putting the, the present kind of the Christmas tree, and you, you try to explain to them that, hey, you are bowing down to the tree, the same tree that you're going to use to warm yourself, the same tree you're going to use to cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is an abomination against the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to face this fire of furnace. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But if not, mm -hmm. be it known unto thee, mm -hmm. O king, mm -hmm. that we will not serve thy God. That's right, we will not serve thy God. Go ahead. Nor worship the golden image uh -huh. which thou hast set up. Then these men were bound in their coats, mm -hmm. their hoses, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because the king's com commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So those men even got burnt. <coughs> that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. But let's see what happened. Go ahead. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into this midst of the fire? So he shot out, because now he saw three. Go ahead. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. <laughs> he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, mm -hmm. walking in the midst of the fire. So this must be a big furnace that they can walk around in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they have no hurt. No and the, hurt. Go ahead. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Didn't the Lord say he will not forsake you? So he is proving his word right here. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the, to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. 
That's right. You servants of the Most High God, please recognize who, which God Meshach and Abednego served. And Azariah, go ahead. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men, upon whose body the fire had no power. That's right. They don't even smell like smoke. Go ahead. Nor was a hair on their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trust in him. Even and the stranger now have some faith in the true and living God. He made him a believer. <laughs> Go ahead. And have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. That's right. So the Lord has proven. See, we went here just to show you that even through the worst of times, you need to still hold on to your God. He is still able to save you. His hand is not sure that he cannot heal. So let's go to uh, Ezra. No, Ezekiel, sorry, Ezekiel 14. We just had up, let's see how much we have. Uh, Okay, so yeah, Ezekiel fourteen. Ezekiel fourteen. Ezekiel fourteen and fourteen. Go ahead. Though, though these three men, Noah, mm -hmm. Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should, they should be delivered with their own souls by their righteous, said the Lord God. Right. They can't save nobody else but themselves. Drop down to verse 18. As righteous they, as they are, they can't save no one else but, their, but themselves. Go ahead. Verse 18. Though these three men were in it, mm -hmm. as I live, said the Lord mm -hmm. God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. But they, they only shall be delivered themselves. That's right. So, if the wife can't save the husband, the husband can't save the wife, neither can the father save the son, mm -hmm. or the, the father save the daughter. Mm -hmm. it's, this is an individual thing. So, skip down to verse 20. Though no Daniel and Job were in it as I live, said the Lord God. Mm -hmm. They shall deliver neither son nor daughter. Mm -hmm. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. By what? Their righteousness. Their righteousness. So that's what we have to have to be delivered. So we're going to go to what? James again? James 5? James 5. James 5. James 5, we'll up at verse 7. We'll read from 17 to 18. Be patient, therefore. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth. So when you got to be patient, until the coming of the Lord. You gotta wait for the precious fruit, but it's ours. Go ahead. And have long patience for mm -hmm. it until he received the early and latter rain. Mm -hmm. Be ye also patient. Mm -hmm. Establish your hearts. That's right. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Mm -hmm. Grudge not one against another, brethren, mm -hmm. lest ye be condemned. Mm -hmm. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Who is the judge? Jesus. That's right. Go ahead. Take, my brethren, the mm -hmm. prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of mm -hmm. suffering, affliction, and of patience. Okay, so then we read about some of those prophets. 
read about Daniel, read about Ezekiel, read about uh, David. Go ahead. Behold, mm -hmm. we count them happy which endure. <laughs> Ye have heard of the patience of Job, mm -hmm. and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. That's right. So we got to be patient. All right, let's go to, uh, we got two, two more places, two or three more places. Let's go back to Job. Let's just go to Job uh, 2. Let's go to Job chapter 2, and we're going to pick up at 1. Job chapter 2, and we're going to pick up at verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. That's right. So even Satan had to answer the Lord. Mm -hmm. so, who, so who is in charge? The Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, this, the devil made me do it. <laughs> who they need to go talk to? Who they need to go see? The man that sent him, right? Because the Lord is in charge of the devil. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. Has thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed mm -hmm. evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, mm -hmm. although, the, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Who moveth the Lord against him? That's the Lord. The Lord uh, Satan Cause the Lord to move his hand against Job. Go ahead. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, mm -hmm. yet all that a man hath will he give for his life. That's right. But put forth thine hand now, mm -hmm. and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Right, don't kill him. That's his instruction. Let's see if Satan is going to... Listen. Go ahead. So, so, went, so went Satan forth from his presence and the, mm -hmm. uh, of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boil, with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Yep. Go ahead. And he took him a pot's herd and scraped himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, <coughs> "Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die." Mm. So curse God and that. When he said unto them, don't be salty you like uh, Adam, and, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But what, look what Job is going to say to her. Go ahead. The, when he said unto her, mm -hmm. Thou speaketh as one of a foolish woman speaketh. Mm -hmm. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and, not, uh -huh. and, shall, not, and shall we not receive evil? That's right. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So Job did not sin with his lips. Because then the Lord is going to establish Job. So none of us have gone through the trials and tribulation that Job have, have gone through in one day. So let's go to uh, Job 42. And just we, we, we got just one more place. Job 42. And we're going to pick it up at 10. When you get there, go ahead. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and they up and all they that had been in his acquaintance before, 
and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him all and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Right, so the, the Lord rewards Job with double. He lost all his children. The Lord gave him back all of his kids. Right. Everything. Go ahead. Every man also gave him a piece of money, mm -hmm. and every one an earring of gold. Mm -hmm. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a, th and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she-asses. He, he also had seven sons and three daughters. Seven sons and three daughters. Go ahead. How and long did Job live? Go ahead. And he, and he called it the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Ken can rent a, a punch. <laughs> and, and in all the land were there no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their fathers gave them inheritance among the brethren. After this, Job lived 140 years mm -hmm. and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job lived and to see four generations. So that's the reward of the righteous. So let's go to the last place. This is Revelation 3 and 19. This is the last place. I hope you all get something from this lesson. I know it's kind of meaty with all that reading, but that's what we do. You know, we read the book. We don't tell you what's on our mind. Because only through these pages that you can get salvation. So go ahead, Revelation 3 and 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Mm -hmm. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's right. Be zealous and repent. So the Lord is not his intention to destroy anyone. Because the Lord is plenteous in mercy. Do right by him, and he will do right by you. And thank you for your time. Amen. Amen. Amen.